Welcome to the Brown University Library. In this module, we will explore the question of scholarly journals and how a student doing research might evaluate them for unethical and predatory practices. This module was designed and recorded by Andrew Creamer and Erica Sevetson. Our objectives are to define terms such as open access journals, public access articles, impact factors, indexing, and phrases used by journals such as included in PubMed Central and indexed in Medline. To recognize and describe some warning signs of suspicious journals exhibiting unethical business practices. To use the Brown University Library resources and tools to find and evaluate scholarly journals in your field and to describe an approach to locating journals for your future publications. You will sometimes hear about the term predatory publishing being used in a discussion of open access. These are two separate issues and should not be conflated. For some background, here is a definition of open access. OA is used broadly to describe a movement to make scientific research output freely available to anyone, regardless of whether they subscribe to a journal or have access via an institution. Although OA has been talked about for decades, as a movement, it gained momentum in the early 2000s to counter the cost of online journals. Public access is sometimes confused with open access, but is not exactly the same thing. Broadly speaking, it refers to a governmental mandate which requires that the products of publicly funded research be made publicly available online in a timely manner. Being open access or public access in and of its own is no reflection on the quality of the research presented. You may also have heard the terms predatory journal or predatory publishing. These were terms coined to describe some unethical practices used in the wake of the open access movement. These terms are controversial, but generally refer to journals that market themselves as open access, but in reality exist mainly to make a profit. It is important to note that open access does not necessarily mean predatory. Being open access does not on its own affect the quality of content or diminish its peer review. The term predatory can be pejorative. We prefer to describe unethical or suspicious publishing practices. With a few notable exceptions, rather than presenting a specific list of journals as predatory, it's preferable to develop critical skills that you can use to evaluate an individual title or publisher and its rigor or trustworthiness. So what are the hallmarks of an unethical journal? They may publish submissions with very rapid turnaround, sometimes within a few days or weeks. The peer review process may not be clear or may not be as advertised, or the editorial process may not be obvious. They may use deceitful tactics such as untrue claims, false impact factors, presenting editors or editorial boards without, sorry, presenting editors or editorial boards using researchers' names and bios without their knowledge. They may set up fake accounts for authentic journals to deceive potential authors. This is known as hijacking. They may charge extremely high or extremely low APCs, article processing charges. Charging a fee is not inherently predatory. It is common for open access and non-open access journals to require authors to pay APCs. Before we go any further, here are a few, are a few definitions of terms that are often used when evaluating journals. The journal impact factor is a measure of the frequency with which the average article in a journal has been cited in a particular year or period. A journal's impact factor is often used to determine the top journals in the field. Recognized and reputable sources of impact factors are journal citation reports, which Brown subscribes to, and Scopus, which Brown does not subscribe to. If Google Scholar is cited as an impact factor source, it should be used with one of the above. Copernicus value is not a reputable source for an impact factor and should not be accepted on its own. Please remember that journals in different fields may have very different impact factors. So the top journal in, in oncology, cancer research, may have a very different impact factor than the top journal in a subspecialty like child psychology. Indexing refers to whether an article database assigns subject headings or keywords to articles that it covers. These headings are from a list of terms called a thesaurus or a controlled vocabulary. For instance, the Medline database uses MeSH or medical subject headings for its indexing. An article database may or may not use indexing. 
Before a database makes the decision to index a journal, the journal is reviewed by a committee to determine factors and standards, such as quality of research, policies regarding peer review, and the longevity and likelihood of continued publication. Indexing in a major database can be used as a proxy for determining the reputation and quality of the journal, although it is not the only factor to consider. In the case of PubMed, PubMed is actually an interface to the Medline database. That is, it includes all of the content you would find in Medline via Ovid or Web of Science, but it also contains some other materials. For instance, all of PubMed Central will show up in PubMed, but Medline does not index all of the content in PubMed Central. You will sometimes see journals claim to be indexed in PubMed. Sometimes this is a result of confusion, and sometimes it's deliberately misleading. It's good to remember that there is no such thing as being indexed in PubMed. Google Scholar has very wide coverage, and it does search the full text of journal articles, but it does not apply subject headings or inclusion or exclusion criteria, so it is not an indexed database. It is accurate to say that a journal is included or covered in PubMed or Google Scholar. It is not accurate to say that journals are indexed in these sources. So how do you, as a consumer of medical research, evaluate whether a journal that you've found is genu generally reputable or is unethical? Some warning signs of unethical practices might be ungrammatical sentences or misspellings in the text, which could imply hasty publication practices. The journal may use uh, a title that is purposefully a single letter or word away from a legitimate journal. They might use misleading statements regarding the journal being indexed in PubMed, or they might advertise a Copernicus value as the impact factor. They may, may use some hyperbolic sales language, similar as to what you would find on a sales page uh, to recruit authors or editors or on their own homepage. There may be a very short period between submission, acceptance, or publication. They may lack information about the reviewers or the peer review process, the editors, and the editorial board. Or they might use the same journal abbreviation as a journal indexed in Medline. Here is an example of two journals that we're going to look at a little more carefully. On the right, we have Journal of Biomedical Science. Looking closely at the web page, I see that it's part of the Springer Nature package of journals. This is a publisher that I recognize and trust. On the left, we have the Journal of Biomedical Sciences, one letter away from the Journal of Biomedical Science. I cannot tell who the publisher is from the web page, and I do see that they, in, that they advertise an index Copernicus value. So this is something that I would critically evaluate. I also see that they do have a journal impact factor, but they don't indicate where that impact factor is from. So again, I would use a critical eye when looking at this journal. If you're looking for some trustworthy journals, these are journals with established peer review processes. You will find journals, you will find articles from all of these journals within PubMed Central because all of these journals publish NIH funded research. JAMA actually publishes an open access journal, JAMA Open. Here are some open access publishers that have established peer review processes and are considered generally trustworthy. It's important to remember that articles have been retracted from, uh, from some of the top biomedical journals. So regardless of the publisher, one should retain a critically, critical perspective when evaluating the methodology in any research article. So let's do some quick evaluation as we would in a PubMed search in real time. I want to do a search for uh, Alzheimer's with amyloid and anticoagulants and plasma. So I have my search here. Running the search in PubMed, I retrieve 13 references. I'm going to page down. I see a few that say that they are free or free in PMC. I'm going to focus on two of these articles. First one, number five in my list, from J. Biochem. If I mouse over, I see it's the Journal of Biological Chemistry. Opening the abstract, 
I see that the journal has been indexed for Medline, or the article has been indexed for Medline, so it does have subject headings assigned to the article. It is a free PMC article, so this means it was most likely funded with NIH funding and they needed to make it publicly available. But if I need to know a little bit more about this journal, if I didn't know anything, I could find it out very quickly by going up to the journal title, clicking on it, and going to search in the NLM catalog. The NLM catalog is a list of journals held by National Library of Medicine with information about where the journal is indexed and what the coverage of it is. Journal of Biological Chem Chemistry, I see, uh, has been published since 1905, weekly for the last 25, 30 years or so. Um, it's published by the American Society for Bio Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. So this is a known scientific uh, association um, and probably a reputable publisher with a very long publication history. Paging down a little further, I do see that it's in Index Medicus and Medline since 1965. I also see if a little further down, current indexing status, currently indexed for Medline. So this means that National Library of Medicine judges that there is still uh, a peer review process, which is trustworthy, and they uh, trust that this publication will not be canceled anytime soon. I'm going to go back to my PubMed record and one more. And now I'm going to look at number four on our list by Westmark. All right, so looking at this record, I do not see that it was indexed in, in Medline, so I don't see any subject headings associated with it. If you don't recognize the journal title, once again, we can click on it, Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and Parkinsonism. I'm going to go to the NLM catalog to see what I can find out. Now we see a much shorter NLM catalog record. Glancing quickly through it, I see the publication began in 2011. This is not necessarily a sign of quality as publishers start new journals all the time. Publisher is the Omics Publication Group. Electronic links, it says it's in PubMed, selected citation only, not currently indexed for Medline. So anything that appears in PubMed is for where the manuscript was deposited in PubMed Central in compliance with NIH public access policies. So that gives us some information. It might not be as much information as you want to fully evaluate this journal. So now what I'm going to do is I want to go to the, the journal's website. I don't see a, li a link over here within the journal article to the publisher. So I'm going to click on the DOI and that will bring me to the publisher. Here I am uh, with the full article. If I go to the home page. What I'm looking for is I want to find out what it says about where the, art, where the journal is indexed. And I'm going to go down, I see where it says indexing and archiving. It gives me a list of the places where this journal is indexed. And right at the top, index Copernicus. This is where we get that Copernicus value, Google Scholar. I don't see any databases that I recognize as using actual indexing and applying subject headings. If I want to find out a little more about who the editors are, I might go to the editorial panel and look at the editorial board. And here I see a number of uh, low quality images. Um, they are not standardized. This is again something that might cause me to use um, a more of a critical eye with this journal. At this point, 
I've seen enough that I would use a very critical eye when evaluating content from this publisher. In an earlier slide, we discussed that it's best not to present an entire list of journals as unethical or predatory. However, here is an example of a publisher, Omics International, which is under an investigation for their business tactics. Omics journals utilize many of the unethical practices we detailed before and is currently the subject of an FTC investigation. Returning to that NLM catalog, uh, record for the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and Parkinsonism. Remember, this was a journal that is part of the Omics publication group. So again, being critical when evaluating the content from this particular journal. Here is the full research that details uh, many of the practices that have caused this publisher to be investigated. And you can see they uh, used some of the tactics that we flagged as suspicious. A couple of closing notes. If you run across an article in a resource like Google Scholar and cannot find it through PubMed, you can check the indexing in a resource called Ulrichs. Ulrichs shows you where a journal is indexed and whether it is peer reviewed. Ulrichs is available through Brown, through the Brown University Library. We will not go into Ulrichs in this session any further, but do feel free to reach out to any Brown librarian with questions if you find yourself with questions about a journal and wanting to use Ulrichs. If you would like to publish an article and are trying to evaluate a journal from the perspective as an, of an author, an excellent resource is Think, Check, Submit. This gives you some things to look at when you're trying to decide whether you should submit to a journal. We also recommend talking to a research mentor if you're just getting started in this process. So in summary, here are some tips for evaluating journals when you're doing research. Check to see if the journal is indexed in Medline. If an impact factor is used, check to see whether the impact factor is from Scopus or journal citation reports. Look for evidence of peer review. Check to see if the journal is associated with a scientific association or a society. See if there are recognized editors and authors with expertise in the topic area of the journal and see if you can find detailed biographies of these editors. And critically evaluate the research question, the methodological rigor, the quantity and quality of the evidence they cite, whether they are transparent in their funding and list conflicts of interest, and check for replicability and reproducibility of the research. And finally, if you have any other questions about this process, please feel free to reach out to any member of the sciences team. Thank you.